Tourette syndrome is a disease which has its onset during childhood and or adolescence and is often lifelong. Although the earliest descriptions of patients with motor and vocal tics were passed down from the ancient Greeks, Gilles de la Tourette was the first person who systematically described nine cases of the disorder that now bears his name. Tourette syndrome is a common neurodevelopmental disorder affecting up to 1% of the population. It is characterized by multiple motor and vocal tics and starts in childhood. Children with Gilles de la Tourette syndrome sometimes experience physical pain, social isolation, emotional disturbance and are at risk for underachievement. It is difficult to distinguish whether these experiences are the result of the tics themselves or the fact that most children with Tourette syndrome also have other comorbid neuropsychiatric conditions such as attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety disorder or oppositional defiant disorder. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is a psychiatric condition that has long been recognized as affecting children's ability to function. Individuals suffering from this disorder show patterns of developmentally inappropriate levels of inattentiveness, hyperactivity or impulsivity. Oppositional Defined Disorder is diagnosed broadly on the basis of frequent and persistent angry or irritable mood argumentativeness or defiance and vindictiveness. Anxiety refers to anticipation of a future concern and is more associated with muscle tension and avoidance behavior. Anxiety disorders differ from normal feelings of nervousness or anxiousness and involved compulsive disorder is anxiety. a common, often debilitating disorder characterized by the presence of obsessions and compulsions. Obsessions are repetitive thoughts or images which are experienced as intrusive and unwanted. They cause marked anxiety and distress. Compulsions are repetitive behaviors or mental acts that individuals with OCD perform in an attempt to decrease their anxiety. Etiology In his initial paper, Gilles de la Torette reported that the condition aggregated in families. Since then, researchers have learned that children with GTS have a family history of 50% of the time. Torette syndrome has demonstrated to be one of the most heritable non Mendelian neuropsychiatric disorders. However, multiple large studies have yet to identify a causal gene. GTS appears to be highly polygenic with environmental factors affecting individual phenotype. Pathophysiology Antipsychotics have been clearly shown to reduce ticks, pointing toward a major role for dopamine in GTS. Dopamine receptors are involved in both the excitatory and inhibitory pathways of the basal ganglia as well as the frontal cortex and ventral striatum. Theories suggest abnormalities in dopamine pathways at the presynaptic, intrasynaptic and postsynaptic levels. GABA disruption has been demonstrated in pathological postmortem studies of Tourette syndrome patients. This disruption may result in disinhibition of corticobasal ganglia loops. History and physical examination Motor tics are sudden, rapid, recurrent, non-rhythmic, stereotype motor movements, generally preceded by an urge. They can affect any parts of the body, but are by far most common in the face, head and neck region. Vocal tics include any tic that makes noise like sniffing, grunting, humming, clicking, yelling words repetitively. Corporalia, which is shouting expletives or other obscenities, affects less than 10% of patients with GTS. Criteria for Tourette disorder Multiple motor tics and one or more vocal tics have been present at some time during the illness, although not necessarily concurrently. The tics may wax and wane in frequency but have persisted for more than one year 
since the onset of the first tick. Onset is before age 18. The disturbance is not attributable to the physiological effects of a substance or another medical condition. The typical age of tick onset is 4 to 6 years with symptoms peaking around 10 to 12 years of age. Simple motor ticks are typically diagnosed early while more complex ticks tend to develop later. The individual ticks have a rapid onset occurring multiple times daily. They escalate over the next several days to weeks. Then they plateau for a variable amount of time, weeks to years, before gradually tapering to a stop. Most patients report a premonitory urge, which they usually describe as a vague sense that they need to perform the movement, followed by a sense of relief after the tick. About 20% of patients report a sensory component with the urge, usually as itching, tingling, or aching. Patients consistently report that this premonitory urge is the factor that is most bothersome in Torres syndrome. Younger children do not report this urge as frequently as the older children for reasons that are not clearly understood. The movements themselves are involuntary in the sense that they are mostly subconscious and the patient cannot typically make them stop completely, but they are under the voluntary influence. Most patients report the ability to suppress their tics for varying lengths of time. However, this active suppression can take a tremendous amount of focus and energy. Patients report that suppressing ticks causes the premonitory urge to build to a level that can be quite distressing. Some patients are hesitant to attempt to suppress ticks because it can lead to worsening ticks or a sense that they lose control of their ticks. This phenomenon is called purging. Children with GTS often experience a lot of anxiety, sleep abnormalities, poor impulse control, or other behavioral disorders. These comorbid neurobehavioral disorders often cause more psychosocial impairment for the child than the severity of the tics. Simple motor tics are sudden brief repetitive movements that involve a limited number of muscle groups. Complex ticks are distinct coordinated patterns of movements involving several muscle groups. Sensory ticks such as body sensations, for example, cold, heat, heaviness, urging, and touching, which often precede a motor tic, have been described in a large number of Tourette syndrome patients. Here are some examples of simple ticks. Simple motor ticks include blinking, turning the head, shrugging, shaking of extremities, and food stamping. While simple vocal tics include throat clearing, sniffing, coughing, mumbling, flicking, whistling, grunting, snoring, and barking. Now some examples of complex tics. Complex motor tics include touching, lying down flat, deep knee bends, push-ups, steps backwards, certain order of steps during walking, and turning around. Complex vocal tics include imitation of sounds, repetition of senseless items, corpolalia, echolalia, palilalia, and echokinesia. Differential diagnosis includes pharmacologically induced hyperkinesias, for example, with L-dopa amphetamine, Huntington's disease, Sydenham's chorea, metabolic disturbances, for example, Wilson's disease, schizophrenic stereotypes, tardive dyskinesias, motor automatisms, and psychogenic movement disorders. Extrapyramidal movement disorders are known to occur as a symptom of post-streptococcal disease such as in Sydenham's chorea for a long time. Huntington's disease, today easily diagnosed by molecular genetic methods, is a movement disorder often showing similar phenomena to Torres syndrome. Pharmacologically induced hyperkinesias, induced by for example L-dopa or amphetamine, is an important differential diagnosis, but tardive dyskinesias, 
caused by antipsychotic therapy often show similar motor symptoms to tics. Schizophrenia is often associated with movement abnormalities such as stereotypic movements and motor automatisms. The latter also frequently found in organic brain disorders. This has to be considered as well, particularly since schizophrenia and Tourette syndrome have common pathogenic features and co-occur in certain cases. Apart from schizophrenia, psychogenetic movement disorders are an important psychiatric differential diagnosis in Tourette syndrome. Another important point to note is that Tourette syndrome is not only a movement disorder but also a psychiatric disorder. It is becoming increasingly obvious that Tourette syndrome is not merely a movement disorder manifested by motor and vocal tics but also a relatively common neurobehavioral complex manifested in addition to tics by attention deficit, obsessive compulsive symptoms, lack of impulse control and a variety of other behavioral symptoms. Since most of the cases of Tourette syndrome are mild and do not provoke medical diagnosis and treatment, the patients seen in the clinic represent only the tip of the iceberg. Evaluation Detailed history and physical examination by an experienced clinician can lead to an appropriate diagnosis. Neurologic examination should be normal other than the presence of motor or vocal tics. It is important to evaluate for evidence of comorbid conditions as well, including attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety disorder, or other behavioral problems. Often, these are quite disruptive for the child's social functioning. Currently, there is no specific laboratory or genetic test available to diagnose Tourette syndrome. Brain MRI or MRI CT studies have shown subtle normal. reduced corded volume in patients with GTS and the degree of this volume loss correlates to obsessive compulsive disorder symptoms. However, these results were obtained by rigorously detailed measuring and the techniques are not currently available to most community-based providers. Management Behavior therapy and or pharmacological treatment of Tourette syndrome may be indicated if the child is experiencing impaired quality of life. This may be the result of pain from repetitive movements or whiplash tics. There may be difficulty with specific motor tasks secondary to disruptive tics or difficulty transitioning to sleep at night because of frequent movement. The child may experience social isolation or distress and is at high risk for mood disturbance. Now, behavior therapy. Considering the potential side effects associated with medication, behavior therapy should be the first line treatment option. Habit reversal training, usually as the main component of comprehensive behavioral intervention for tics, is the recommended treatment of choice in the United States practice parameter. This involves multiple approaches to treatment including training in recognizing and redirecting tics as well as intervention for influencing factors such as relaxation techniques for anxiety. This therapy enhances the patient's recognition of the premonitory urge and offers a competing response or a motor movement that is not compatible with the tic. Studies have shown significant improvement in tick control compared to supportive psychotherapy and over 80% of children maintain this control after 6 months of follow-up. Younger children are often less aware of the premonitory urges in ticks, which may make it more difficult for them to fully understand the treatment. Pharmacological therapy For more severe cases, Alpha-2 adrenergic agonists and antipsychotics are the first-line pharmacologic choices. Guanfacin and clonidine are the recommended alpha-2 adrenergic agonists. Sedation is by far the most common reason children do not tolerate these drugs. Other side effects include orthostatic hypotension, bradycardia, or irritability. 
Haloperidol and pimozide are the first generation antipsychotics with the most data showing efficacy in reducing tick severity. However, their use is limited by potentially severe side effects such as sedation, acute dystonia and other drug induced movement disorders like weight gain and prolonged typical antipsychotic medications such as risperidon and eripiprazole both have data that clearly demonstrate efficacy. There is a lower incidence of drug-induced movement disorders, but they are still high side effect medications. Risperidone can cause sedation, weight gain and metabolic disturbances, including hyperprolactinemia. Eripiprazole causes sedation, nausea and weight gain. There is weak evidence showing that topiramate reduces stick burden with a better side effect profile so it may be a consideration if the child cannot tolerate the other two classes of medication. For children refractory to comprehensive behavioral intervention for tics and pharmacotherapy, there are a couple of other options. Botulinum toxin injections may be useful for motor tics that are particularly disabling or painful. These are logistically difficult and require an experienced specialist to administer. Deep brain stimulation has been used in patients with severe GTS, refractory to all of the above treatment strategies. Enhancing healthcare team outcomes. Tourette syndrome is best managed by an interprofessional team that includes a psychiatry nurse, pediatrician, primary care provider, psychiatrist, school teacher, and a social worker. The provider should take a holistic approach to the treatment of children with GTS, considering comorbid neurobehavioral conditions. Families should be provided with extensive education, reassurance and support. Studies show that the school teacher can have a significant impact on the psychosocial experience of a child with Tourette syndrome, positive or negative. Taking time to educate the teacher about the condition and encouraging the education of the students in the child classroom can significantly change a child's life.